Now that we've had a chance to get our heads around the fact that not all acids are strong acids, some of them are weak and do not fully dissociate, we need to start looking at how we can quantify that. We can uh, work out unknown concentrations using the technique of uh, titration, but in order for us to get a bit of more of a handle on exactly what's happening mathematically for different types of acids, we need this mathematical relationship in order to identify it. The fact that uh, weak acids do not fully dissociate creates an equilibrium, and we know how to deal with equilibrium uh, situations. If you want to um, write this in perhaps a little bit more uh, precise detail, then we should actually include water in our equation, and therefore the H3O+, plus, which is aqueous, and the uh, anion which is uh, left in the solution as well. So this is the dissociation that occur or the ionization that occurs when the proton from the acid is donated to the, uh, the water molecules in order to form the hydronium ion and the anion. Now as with our previous calculations of um, the equilibrium constant, which was products over reactants. If we were to look at the products here, which go on the numerator, and the uh, reactants down the bottom, if I was to put the water in there, which I added in the last, um, in the second of these equations, the problem with water is that the value of the concentration of water in liquid is um, irrelevant, um, and it, we just treat it as a constant, and therefore it disappears. And that's often why you find the first of these um, often written in order to help us understand the value of the equilibrium constant as it applies to acid ionization, um, just because we remove that water from the equation. Obviously, when we're doing the calculations, whether we're thinking about the hydronium ion or the hydrogen ion concentration, these two things are interchangeable and therefore can both be used um, irrespective of how we uh, represent them in the equation. The important thing about this type of an equilibrium constant is this is called the acid ionization constant. Now, obviously, because it is products over reactants, the stronger the acid, the greater degree of ionization, and that's another way of saying uh, the greater the number of products, and therefore the higher the value of Ka. So K is the equilibrium constant, and we use the subscript A to indicate acid. Ka is the acid ionization constant. So what can we do with that? Well, one of the things that we can do with that is we can also draw a relationship to what we call the pKa. So we've, we know that the concentration of hydrogen ions can be related to the pH scale. It's a log scale and, and it gives us a way of measuring differences in the values for each of these. If we identify that the Ka value is often um, a value that's related directly to that um, uh, hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration, then we can also look at a scale which we call the pKa scale. So this is another one of these little equations that is worth remembering. And we'll have a look at a couple of examples for you in order to um, practice with it. Of course, the problem with the, the pKa value is like the value for the um, pH. As the acid gets weaker, the pKa increases. So we know, for example, that uh, pH of 1 is going to be a stronger acid solution than a pH of Two. And this scale works the same for the pKa's. So a pKa uh, value which is uh, small or low is going to be stronger than a high pKa. The alternative to that is as the acid gets weaker, the pKa increases. So have a look at the relationship between Ka and pKa to give you an idea of how these things can actually be used to determine the relative strength of an acid solution. 
Of course, there's, a, there's an equivalent for bases, which we call the KB or the PKB, and they are calculated in exactly the same way. And we'll probably have a look at a couple of examples in class um, just to mention it so you've seen it in passing rather than spend too much time today.